My name is Michael Halleck and I'm reporting on one session where we presented the new guidelines, the updated guidelines, a process that has taken two years. We are about to finish the paper and will submit it uh, hopefully by the end of June and uh, then it will appear uh, in, a, in a journal this year. The main changes or the main points regarding the guidelines are very simple. First, we try to change as little as possible. So for example, despite all the innovations and the novelties, still as of today, there is no recommendation to start treatment without symptomatic disease or without advanced stage. So that m remains our clinical practice. And it's important to stress that because now we have agents that have less toxicity and somebody could think about starting therapy earlier. So that's one important point. Second point on the responses. Uh, with the novel agents in clinical trials, we have seen difficulties in assessing the response because uh, the former guidelines requested to stop therapy and then to assess it two months later. Now we recommend to continue therapy and to assess the response possibly when it's a maximal response is achieved. That is a little bit difficult because sometimes you do not know but uh, usually it's defined by a steady state at an optimal point. So when things don't further improve, then you can start assessing the response. Finally, imaging. Um, there is a strong feeling amongst CLL researchers that imaging is not needed for the follow-up of patients. So you don't have to systematically use CAT scans or ultrasound, unlike in lymphoma and solid lymphoma, if you wish. In CLL, it's a leukemia, so you follow the blood counts, you examine the patient, and that's usually enough. And that is, again, emphasized in the guidelines. So these are a couple of essential points for the management of the patients. More is in the paper, um, and I hope it will help the development of new compounds and novel drugs in CLL. Thanks.